Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Um, is this just... the announcement where you announce that you're a vampire now? Yes, yes, you figured it <laughs> out. Uh, the, my my real name is uh, Coach Veratu. Um, <laughs> it's a Rick and Morty reference. Love that show. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, I'm glad that we have a lot of people here today to announce that we have a new server icon. Um, we're just gonna. That's that's it. Bye. Um. <laughs> This is your friendly ALTTPR ladder admins here. This is, uh, I'm Dunka. I'm here with Herfy. Herfy, how are you on this fine Saturday? Doing great. The weather has turned very nice here. It's uh, very warm. The sun is out. I'm enjoying my afternoon, 6 p.m. on the dot right now. Nice. It's still chilly here. I just went, I had to run out to grab a few things today, and it's still pretty chilly, but uh, we had snow the other day, so who knows? Who knows? That's the way it works here. Um, so yeah, we have, uh, some stuff to talk about. Um, if you hear me pause at any point, it means I'm drinking. I do have a nice vodka drink in front of me because I'm not nervous. Are you nervous? No, I told you before we started this, that I'm just here for the show. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not nervous. I'm not nervous at all. Um, if I got any shaky in my voice, it's because, because I'm not nervous. So, um, so here's what we've got today. We have a, this is going to be about an hour long. Uh, obviously, we need to show every angle of the new icon, the new server icon. Um, and yeah, so it's going to take about an hour to go through that. Now, I will ask anybody in chat, hold your questions. Um, because we'll have a, a QA session at the end of this, and there'll be more information about the new server icon. Um so just save it to the end, please. Uh, and we're just going to try to get through this as quickly as possible because there is a lot to go over. Um, so yeah, um, I think with that, we can get started here. <sighs> Let's talk about some things. Okay, so first things first, ladder feedback. So if you guys remember, about three months ago, we sent out a survey asking about bits and pieces. You know, what do you like? What do you don't like? Um, there's a whole bunch of different things in there. That was very intentional, the way that we worded things and the way that things were set up. Um, it's something that we kind of prepped well in advance. Um, for that survey, we did get 113 responses. Uh, I would say most of those are from ladder. I do know that it got spread out to some of the other communities and we got a few responses from the other communities as well, which I greatly appreciate if anybody's there, if anybody's listening, appreciate it. Um, but yeah, the, it gave us a good amount, um, at least from the, the sample set that we got, it gave us a good idea of what, what people do what they don't do what they like what they don't like it's you know simple stuff like that um that being said there was really two sections of this that we really really cared about and it drove our basically drove us to where we are today so a couple things we're going to go over here are some of the responses that we did get back from this um these were more generalized questions uh how often do you play rando um, obviously most of you guys are more frequent players, uh, a couple of retired. I would have been one of those if I answered, I obviously did not answer. Um, but this was just to get an idea of who you are and the type of person that is actually responding to this. Um, we, we took these two together with some of the write-ins, uh, and there's one question we won't go over here, which is the, um, uh, the what branches people play on and what types of modes people play on. That one was a write-in. It was all over the board. Um, but again, it gave us a good idea of who took the time to fill it out, who gave us proper feedback. Um, the So yeah, you could, I don't, I'm not going to go over every bit, of, every bit on this. We'll be here all day. Um, but yes, these are the responses that we got from, uh, from the first couple of questions. Again, this is to give us an idea of who is who. This was a really important one. Um, 
And this one, there were a few that left this blank again that says right there in the question, if you don't, if you don't race ladder, feel free to leave it blank. Um, this one was talking about starting over. And the big, obviously you can see here, the majority of this said, doesn't matter. Um, and I think with what we've seen over the, the last couple of years, I, this doesn't surprise me. Um, we have about a 50-50 split between uh, competitive racers and casual racers. Um, we're kind of split between those. We get, we get influxes, especially with invitationals, of more competitive racing versus more casual. Just I just want to race something, get it over with. Um, but uh, once again, good feedback to tell us if we were to start changing things, what we would expect for feedback and, and pushback, really. Um, this one also goes along with that, which is if we were to, to, if we did a reset, what would it mean? And, you know, basically how would you react to like big changes? Um, and this one was huge because it, it told us again, who you are, what you care about, what you're looking for <clears throat> and that, those sort of things. So we took all of these questions together and, you know, we went through everything. We, even the write-ins, we read everything on here. Um, I read through it multiple times and it, it really gave us an idea of the core you know, who, again, who's taking the time to respond to it, what people enjoy and all that jazz. So if you filled it out, I appreciate it. It helped us out a great deal. If you did not fill it out, well, then your voice wasn't heard. Vote, people. Voting is important. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you have the chance, take the opportunity. I just want to add to this. I think it really like goes to show that a lot of people think that uh, lifetime stats are like a cool thing to have like to look back and it, it kind of gives you a history of what you have done on ladder or how you how you did on ladder but it's not really something that like you know motivates them to play more or less yeah yeah and and i do think there's one other thing to go that goes exactly with that is that we do get like we have a lot of people that have been here since the beginning it's been four years we opened the ladder, the ladder discord almost four years ago to the day. It was like the, mm -hmm. it was the first week of April. And then we had that one month of, of season zero. Um, and then we started in, I think it was May 1st. I think it was May 1st uh, is when we actually started our first official race. That was season one. So, uh, yeah, but, yeah, but we do get in We get new people in every day. Um, and like, I, I, we, we obviously we watch who comes in and out. And of course, take the bots out of the equation. Um, you know, there's still a lot of people that come in every day and we just, they're new th that are in the discords, checking things out from other communities. Uh, uh, the Goma podcast, actually, we get a decent amount of people that I see that join through there um, that are only in that discord. So um, what that means is that we get a new, an influx of new users a lot. Um and those are users that are going to be more casual starting out. And again, you're right. They don't care about the lifetime global rankings. Like those are so far beyond new racers right now that it's never going to get reached. So um, I think that does, you know, kind of add to some of these responses and it, it does make some sense. So, um, so to summarize what we came up with, the, the, we had the write-in responses that are in here and we asked really two questions what do you like the most what do you like the least um what do you like the most i think it was almost like 80 percent of the write-ins had something to do with the scheduling where it is it's it's scheduled well in advance you start on this time it ends at this time it's structuralized it's completely automated don't have to worry about anything and honestly that's to in my opinion too it's the best part of the whole system um, so for the first like six months, so the first couple of seasons, I was set up to receive every notification for every race that started and it would wake me up at like three in the morning. And I wanted to make sure that the race started on time and that there was no issues because we had a few issues early on, not a lot, but we had a few issues. 
And I was like super paranoid and anal about this needs to start. And after about six months, I got used to it and I just turned everything off. And here we are three or four years later and we're just, it just runs. Like rarely, rarely do we get, you know, Discord downtime or API issues or anything like that. So we just let it go. And Lazy Kid does a great job of doing what he does. And, you know, until he becomes all powerful. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's pretty, pretty rare. You know, we still fix a few bugs. I finally fixed that mystery bug. I fixed it. I'm 99% sure I fixed it. Um, so <laughs> hopefully we won't have any unscheduled downtimes unless, again, the Discord API has a thing. And Discord's been good lately. Like, we haven't had many issues with Discord, so... Um, so that's not going anywhere. We are going to build on that and we're going to continue forward. But um, yes. So uh, for the other half of this, however, is what you dislike the most. And we most of the these were more spread out, but we really had two main responses. First was we are locked into V31. I get it. it, it, it I think everybody knows why we're locked into V31. Um, we do it for stability reasons. Uh, V31 is in incredibly stable. Rarely do we have any issues with it. Broken seeds are just almost non-existent. We haven't had a broken seed since, what, inverted entrance? And that was a year or two ago, and they fixed it immediately. Oh, I'm sorry. We had the completionist issue. That was recent. Uh, but that was a new feature that really wasn't fully fleshed out. And they fixed all that, too. It's all working. Um... And for the fact that um, the, the API is really fast, like the longest a seed takes to generate is like three or four seconds. And we could technically with 1v1 racing, we could generate up to 50 races and you could do the math on how long that will take. Uh, we haven't had a full 100 person race in a few years, but we've had several and it takes two or three minutes to generate those, you know, to generate those seeds. And if we're on a, on a very volatile API that has a lot of failures and it takes 10, 15 seconds to generate a seed, you're not getting your seed in time um, or with like two minutes to go before the start. And that's not enough time because that race is starting at the top of the hour, whether you're ready or not. Um, nothing stopping it. So um, that is why we stick to V31. Um, yes, the other half of this is ELO rankings and... It really, the ELO came down to when we decided to to run this. There were a few a few people that were complaining about ELO is too simplistic. You know, it doesn't generate enough variance. Uh, there was a lot of push for the the Glico systems and stuff like that, and they were looked into, but it just wasn't important. Like we wanted it to be simple. You know, we wanted it to be it's going to do exactly what we need to do and just exactly it, just, it does minimalistic things to make to spread everybody out from wins and losses and yeah so anyway those are the those were the, the main feedback that we got back and yes and i know yellow is not a, I, i'm gonna call it anyway I, don't, I, just, I, I get it that's why it's capitalized that way i'm still gonna call it that Shut up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was our biggest things that um, that we came back with, with the things that people dislike. And we get it. We get it. It's fine. Um, I will say the system with pairings has worked great. At, we've made several adjustments over the years, um, but knowing what it's supposed to be doing. And yeah, it, 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 it does exactly what we want it to do. Um, and the sauce works. I can confirm with you with 100% certainty the sauce works. And um, yeah, so that is the major thing of feedback that we got back on that side. So, Murphy, perfect time to step in if you want to say something. Um, no, I think you've covered everything pretty well so far. Okay. No, I'm, uh, I'm excited for what's to come. Okay, new icons coming. I'm telling you, new, new icons on the way. So... <laughs> Just to give you a basis on, on everything here, a couple of things. One, Herfie and I have been talking about this for a long time. <laughs> and when I say a long time, maybe about a year. It's been just under a year, I think. Um, we were talking about this right before we came on the air, about when we talked about this. And it was before last summer. 
Um, so we we had a couple of different ways we could go with this. We we've talked about you know making sweeping changes, making very few changes, um, and yes, we even thought about shutting it down last year, um, and it came close. If things had gone differently, we would not be having this discussion right now, and ladder would be non-existent by now. It would be gone. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers. I, we haven't. I really talk about Harfy. You know, and I know there's other people that. Oh know. yeah. Um, I, I, I'll be very, very brief with this to give you an idea of why things went the way they went. I had a medical scare last year, last July, where they found a mass in my chest. Um, and everything's fine. Everything's fine. Um, I have a, uh, thyroid mass in my chest. It's completely normal. What happened, the, the doctors think what happened was when I was a kid, a little bit of uh, my thyroid broke off and it got lodged right be, right next to my windpipe. Um, it actually pinches my windpipe. The, the x-ray on this is actually very, very I- interesting to see. Um, but it's between my windpipe and um, my chest muscle. And over the years, it's just collected little bits of fatty tissue and everything. I'd gone to the ER for something completely different. They did scans and they found it. Um, and then I took like a month of getting tests and I had to do a PET scan and a bunch of other things. And they found it and it's completely normal. It's, well, it's not normal, but it's completely harmless. I actually just got another CAT scan done a month ago. It's completely unchanged. It's just there. And it's it's just, it's pinching my windpipe a little bit, but I I wouldn't have known if I hadn't got the thing done. So if it had come back differently, <laughs> then yes, we would be having a very different discussion. Well, no, no, we wouldn't. We would not be having any discussion. But yes, everything's fine. Everything's fine. I just wanted to give a little backstory on what happened because I know that we talked about it briefly in Discord, but I didn't give any details. So yes, everything's fine. I just have to get CAT scans done every six months just to confirm it's not growing. If it grows any bigger, then it's going to pinch my windpipe and well, then I can't breathe. So um anyway so we've taken everything into account and here's what we've got <sighs> mm. you ready for this uh-huh i'm ready for this so october 2024 a new server icon Whew! Brand new server icon. Oh, man. I told you guys. Yeah, don't worry about the thing. It's pixelated. Don't worry about it. (laughs) When you take something (laughs) that is 240p and you make it really big, it becomes pixelated. (laughs) I get it. I just did it. It's not going... I'm not using this for anything, but... um, Yes. So... New server icon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm glad that it took us this long to get to it. Um, to give you an idea, this is just an unofficial, an unofficial project name. But I love Hot Shots. It's a funniest shit movie. So um, you will notice a little couple of style changes, new color schemes, new fonts. New bunch of things means new website. I've been working on it for about a month now. Um, it's going to take me some time to finish everything. I've been doing it in my side time. Um, going to have a lot of stuff. We'll get over that. We'll get to that here soon. Um, but um, yes. So the the part do we're going to get rid of that. It's just a funny name. Um, it's likely just going to be ladder. It's not going to be called anything else. We're just going to have old ladder and ladder. So what is this? So we're more or less relaunching ladder. Um, I think we've talked about this before. We already have all the plans in place to finish out the year. Um, So we're in season 23. We have everything already in the works for season 24 and season 25. Um, And then at the conclusion of season 25, we are cutting everything off. We're going to have a brief, probably two to four weeks of beta testing of the new system. And 
then we start fresh from day one again. So this is going to be close to Halloween-ish, uh, which thankfully SGL is early this year. I'm so happy for that because, my God, it would be bad if this happened right at SGL. We would just wait. Um, but uh, but yes, so we're going to start new fresh, probably the end of October, early November, depending on how things go. There'll probably be a little bit of downtime in there just while we're doing updates and fixing things. And there's going to be a few bugs. Let's put it this way. I've, I started working on this shit back in January. So I'm going to have nine months to get this thing going. Um, <laughs> I, I expect to have most of it, you know, fleshed out before this starts. Um, but yes, the big thing is we're starting fresh. The current ladder website's going to be archived. It'll still be accessible. The API will still be accessible. Um, there'll be links to it. You can still get to it. Uh, but we're going to migrate the racer information over to the new system. I, I hope you don't have to re-register again. I say probably in there. There's one technical reason why everybody might have to click a button again. Um, it's, I'm not going to go over details on why, but it's possible. Hopefully we won't have to worry about it. Um, we'll, that's a discussion we'll have in October. Um, so why are we doing this? So yes, why are we doing this? And what does it mean? The big change is we are getting rid of 1v1 racing. Um, we are moving to a free-for-all, large, everybody gets the same seed, large race structure. So, there are reasons for this, and we will get into these. Um, why, but, but we, this is a discussion, again, we've had this discussion for almost a year now. Um, it's something we've actually kind of wanted to do for a while now, and we've got more reasons to do it now. So, we sat down for a while and Herfie and I went over the pros and cons of doing this. So there's a lot of pros and very few cons. Let's just leave it at that. The big pro is that we are no longer locked to V31. And this is the big thing. We've been wanting to do this forever to get out of V31's dependency. Um, we are still going to use V31 for everything that we can. So, because it's it's super stable and the devs are awesome at this. Like they are fantastic at creating a system that is very robust. It works, it's very efficient and we just don't have to worry about it very often. But we do understand that over the last year, especially ladders grown a little bit stale because we are locked into V31 and we just cannot stay on the system and give you guys what you want, which is more modes, more options, all these cool uh, different, you know, um, these different branches that people are playing. There's a lot of them. I don't even know half of this stuff and we'll need more. We will need help from everybody out in the community to help us decide modes and stuff because I just don't know. Um, but... Now we have, instead of having a limited amount of options, now we have an unlimited amount of options. And because of that, we're only going to, because we're only rolling one seed now per race, you know, if it takes 30 seconds to generate a seed, who gives a shit? It doesn't matter. Like that huge thing that was locking us into 31 is gone. It's, we just don't have to worry about it anymore. Now, we're still not going to go crazy. Um, and we are going to ease into this over time, but it's one of those things that now we have this huge pool of options to go to and we can do whatever the hell we want. Um, so the next thing, we're going to launch more races every day. So right now we launch four to five races a day because every race takes up four to five hours of actual time. So we're going to launch more races. Because now we've got all these new modes, we want to make sure that people have a chance to play them. Um, one of the big things that people don't like about the schedule is if you only play one or two modes and it doesn't happen to land at a spot where you can play for all week, well, then you're not going to play. 
So we're going to make these modes, especially the evergreen modes, more accessible and more of them. Um, so we're going to have a little bit of overlap. We'll get to that here in a minute. Um, so yes, odd man out. Gone. Thank God. <sighs> I hate odd man out. I hate it. But we need it. It is essential. Um, it's just essential. So because we have to run with an even number of racers, we cannot go without this. Um, it just, it sucks. But I mean, that's gone. Uh, if we have three racers, if we have 33 racers, it doesn't matter. Um, it just it doesn't matter anymore. Um, no more bitching about the pairings. Okay. I, we love this, by the way. When you guys get into the, the, the lounge and the first thing we see, because we watch, we totally watch. I don't know how much Herfie looks. I look a lot. Um, and when I see, why did I get paired against you? Blah, blah, blah. I laugh. My, I often take screenshots of it and share them. Um, I make sure Herfie sees them. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I, I look, and but if yeah. I don't look, I'm sure to see it um, at some point. Oh, hold on. Just one second here. Hold on. I think my uh, my headset conked off. One second. Give me just a second here. There we go. Herfie, you there? I'm here. Okay, yeah, you my there? headset turned off because there's nothing coming through it. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway. Uh, so yes. Uh, so that's going to go away. Plus, we get to reveal the sauce. I, 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 I'm actually very interested in revealing the sauce to people because we get people that bitch about it. And I think when people see it, they're going to understand it. And they're going to be like, oh, well, that's why. And that makes sense. Um, so we do get to reveal the sauce. Um, seasonal reset, gone. We are no longer having seasons um, as they stand now. We're still going to have rotations, but we're not going to have seasons. Um... So, like, there won't be a season one, season two, season three. It's just going to go, and we'll have little, tiny little gaps where things rotate. We'll get into that here in a moment as well. Um, and then really low, low, low hanging fruit on this, or not low hanging fruit, low priority. We now have the ability to do other things, which is, like, restreams and stuff like that. I don't care about restreams. I really don't. But guess what? We're going to have the option for it if we really wanted to. This might be something we do next year sometime. I, I, it's not important. It's not important. Um, but it, those are types of things that now are open to us. So, um, these are the pros that we came up with. Um, Herfie, I think you were talking and I couldn't hear you. Do you want to, you got to put some input in there? Oh, I was just saying that I, uh, and I also look at the race lane lounge after the races every now and again. And if I don't look myself, I'll probably see it from you sooner or later. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, you you pretty much put everything on this slide and also explain everything as much as you could. So I, I think <clears throat> there's not much for me to add. Uh, I think when we're talking about the few cons that we could come up with. It's coming up next. Uh, there'll yeah. Be, yeah, there'll be some stuff in there that we, we can talk about. But um. Yeah, I'm excited for this. I, I, you know, I was saying to you, I'm not sure what the reception to this is going to be. Are people going to love it? Are people going to hate it? Uh, I was, I was very curious to see. I, I really didn't know or couldn't even imagine what people would say to this. But I'm glad that at least from the chat, it seems that most yeah. people are excited for it. I do too. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that people didn't completely grab their pitchforks as soon as we said it. I, I, I was totally watching chat. Um, <laughs> this is the thing we were most nervous about. Uh, we had, we thought things were going to be good, but we weren't sure. Um, okay, so let's move to the next one. Um, the neutrals, which again is not a word, but I'm using it anyway. We have to use a new ranking system. And we, I'm not going to go over this. because We've got the second half of this is going to be about rankings and stuff like that. We'll go over that in detail. And that's when people are going to run away and they're going to do their thing. But um, rankings are going to change. Obviously, the system we have right now doesn't really work great with um, with large races, um, but we will go over in detail and all of this will be accessible. I have a document that I'll be sharing at the end of this to everybody. You can read through it and hopefully people will be able to um, to understand how things work. 
the cons. And Herfy, we sat there for about two days going back and forth. What are the cons of doing this system? And we came up with one and only one. And that makes cheating easier to do. Like, we, we just couldn't come up with anything else. Um, so when Ladder was launched originally, the, the one of the big things that we wanted to combat, because four years ago, cheating was... I'm not going to say more rampant than it is now, but it was more, it was obvious that shit was going down and nobody knew what it was. So we built the system with 1v1s with cheating in mind to try to prevent this. Um, and now we're opening that back up. Um, so what it means is we and everybody listening has to be a little bit more, a little bit more vigilant on what potential cheating is. Um, we have a lot of systems in the back end that you guys don't know about that we track new users for alts. Um, VPNs are a big one. I, it's funny. I left this in here. I wrote this in January. If you look at this middle line here, I left it in intentionally <laughs> and it says, we are sure there are those in ladder that cheat right now. We know there are a few alts are there that are hiding behind VPNs. Yes, we see you and you are fucking cowards. So it's funny. We left this in there for one person in particular that we just kicked out a month ago. Um, mm -hmm. And yes, like, I mean, full disclosure, we knew that was an alt back in December, but we didn't know who it was. And it wasn't until they literally opened up their mouth that we found out who it was. Um, so like we knew, we knew, and we knew, um, uh, race time knew, uh, Tark knew, like everybody knew, but we didn't know who. So we couldn't do anything about it. Um, and then, yes, then we finally got the option. So we are keeping a close eye on things like this. Um, we know there's a couple of people, I, and I'll be, I'll be honest with you, there's a couple people in Ladder right now that I look at that I watch very closely. And I know that there's something that's not quite there. We just don't have enough to act on it yet. And thankfully, none of them are like, I race every day type people. Um, but uh, we're watching. We are watching. We need everybody to watch. We don't need witch hunts, but we need everybody to stay vigilant. So if you see something, tell us. Just make sure it's not baseless. Um, because it's gonna get a little worse. Just being honest, it's gonna get a little worse. So... Um, yeah, if you see something, please tell us. Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, you pretty much covered everything. I think you know, if you really think about it, it's no different than any qualifier or any right. other bigger race that is happening at any point in random history, right? But the difference, or the big difference to me at least, is going to be the frequency of the races. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put on a lot more group races yeah. and, you know, not all of them will have 50 people in them or whatever, but still yeah. just the amount of races makes it more likely for someone to try mm. and do something weird. Yeah. So we're aware of that. We're keeping an eye out. We're asking all of you to keep an eye out and hopefully, you know, it'll be either easy to catch them or we just won't have that problem, which I understand is a bit of a pipe dream, but yeah. you know, I think, in general, mm. it seems that we're not too horribly off as far as, you know, a cheating problem is concerned in the community at large. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's it, honestly, we need your guys' help. It's just Herfy and I. Now, again, we have a lot of systems set up for this and we watch. Um, thankfully, the other communities, um, the people over at Tark, they talk to us behind the scenes. Yes, I, I'm not going to get into Tark. You guys know how I feel about it. Um, but they do talk to us. We work back and forth behind the scenes. Uh, when we see something, we do we we discuss things and we do act on them when they come up. So um, the race time people they do it as well. Um, so we have a nice back channel going where we do still do communicate and pass information back and forth. Um, but yes, we need everybody's help if we see it. So because um, yeah, it's going to be a thing. We know it. It's just we're going to do everything we can to catch it. But yeah, it's just don't please don't make it a witch hunt. Don't send us an appeal saying so and so did this, this, and this. They're cheating, and it's just like don't do that, man. Now, if you catch somebody making a clip 
of somebody else's stream while they're racing, you should report that. It makes it really easy. Um, <laughs> it makes it like, really easy. Know, that sounds really like a far-fetched example. <laughs> I don't it know makes... where you got that from. <laughs> it makes it really easy to catch them. That's not something anyone would ever do, right? <laughs> no one would ever do that. Uh, all right. Let's talk about the schedule real quick and how we're going to set the schedule. Um, this is going to be short. Uh, this is going to be... This is still a work in progress. I've done a lot of the math on this, but um, to give you an idea of how this is going to work. So the way that Lazy Kid works right now is we have a rotating schedule. <clears throat> we're going to keep the rotating schedule. But now we have two rotating schedules, and they're going to overlap each other. Now, to give you an idea what's how this is going to work, I'm not going to read through this entire example. Please read this if you want to know kind of the details. We're going to keep a lot of the structure the way that we do now. Race signups are going to open at 30, uh, 30 minutes on the hour. They're going to be going for 20 minutes. They're going to close at 50 minutes on the hour. 10 minutes to get ready at top of the hour. Race fires, whether you are ready or not. Um, if we have one or two, uh, zero racers signed up for it, we just cancel the race. We go to the next one. We're fine. Um, but what we're going to do is a nice little overlap. And I have a, uh, a visual display on the next slide that I will show you to give you an idea visually of how it works. But we're effectively going to stagger startups so that no two races will ever start at the same time. Uh, they will start within one to two hours of each other. So, for instance, like in this quick scenario here, race starts at 12. It's a four hour window. Um, and then halfway through that window, another race starts of a different mode, and we're going to stagger the two. So they're different parts of a rotating schedule that rotate similarly, but have different races at different times, which means there's always some variety during the time you want to play. And what this means, and I'll show you the next slide here, this is a good, it's an inaccurate representation of this, but it gives you an idea of how the rotating schedule is going to work. Um, Great example of this. You race open and nothing else. Well, here in this scenario, let's say you're a U.S. player and you can race at noon. So we have a noon race that starts, but we also have a 4 a.m. race that starts. Let's say you're in the EU and you can't race that noon Eastern race, but you can race the 4 a.m. race. Now you don't have to wait for three days to play the mode that you want to race. So we're always going to have two rotating schedules. There will all, generally every one to two hours, well, excuse me, every one to two hours, something will start and we're going to make it so that it's different. Um, that, so things are, so things are a variety during different time windows and it'll still rotate like it does now. So yeah, this is just an idea of how it works. We don't have this completely in place yet. Um, there's some complex math that goes into these windows, these gaps, these white gaps are the one hour increments between the races. We're still going to have that because the signups start in that gap. Um, we're, so we're still going to have that. We're still going to have set time windows An open race, <coughs> excuse me, it's every three hours. We are still going to have a cutoff. It's important that we have that cutoff. We very, very, very rarely have, um, a race that goes longer, like people that have auto forfeit, very rare, very rare. So I'm not too concerned about this. And yes, the times are completely arbitrary. We understand that stuff like door modes, like pottery modes, I don't know how this shit works. They're going to be longer than four hours. Just keep that in mind. But there is complex math that goes into this to make sure that we have, we have overlap, but we don't have windows starting at the same time. Like, we can't have two races starting at, like, 4 p.m. We never want that. So it's algorithmically, it's, we just have to come up with an exact system. Um, and I see everybody in chat talking about forfeits. I'm going to tell you right now, and we're going to spoil this for later, you're not going to want a forfeit mini. <laughs> Urfie, you know why. Um, <laughs> you know no why. Idea. No, no, not at all. So anyway. So that's a general idea of how the schedule is for the most part going to work. Um, so a couple other little odds and ends about the schedule. Uh, seasons again are going away. 
we're still going to rotate races. We're going to keep evergreen modes in there. So like every every schedule is going to have an, a cross keys in it. Every schedule is going to have a casual boots in it. But it, because there's there's staggered rotations, it means now there's potential of two a day instead of one a day. So again, if you're that type of racer that likes racing particular modes and evergreen modes are, are popular modes, then you're going to have more chances to play those modes every day. It's fantastic. So those people that race only a couple of things, guess what? Your options are going to be there. You're going to have more opportunity to race. We understand that that was one of the huge feedback pieces that we got. It's like the rotating schedule is great, but it doesn't quite fit my schedule. So that's why we're doing the two rotating schedules and we have the technology to do it. It's fine. It's not difficult to do. Um, Ladder rankings are going to be maintained indefinitely and they will not reset. I say that now. We just got through four years of racing and we're going to reset them. I say it now. It might change four years from now. But indefinitely means for right now, they're not going to change. Um, when a road when a mode rotates out, if we retire it temporarily, and then you come back six months later, guess what? Your ranking's still there. Might be decayed. We'll talk about decay later. Um, but yes, those rankings aren't going to stay. Every mode will have its own ladder. Um, we're going to review all the options. We have six months to review this. And I'm going to need help from everybody here and in the different communities to know what they want to race. We're probably going to give something out there that says, what do you like to race? And we're going to have people probably recommend flag sets and modes and stuff like that, for especially for the other branches, which I've never even touched. Um, <clears throat> so we have that stuff here. We're going to ask for that. Um, and we're going to gauge our options. Again, we're going to be a little cautious when we start, I think, but we'll become more gutsy as we go. Um, again, evergreen modes are going to stay. Most of those are going to be in there for two times a day. Um, we The one thing we got to be careful is we got to keep things balanced. What we do not want to do is oversaturate because oversaturation means people are going to stop playing. Like there's a nice happy medium that we notice, especially with our seasons, is that everything's on a bell curve. Well, it's a reverse bell curve where it starts high and then it dips low and then it comes back up at the end. We got to be really, really careful about oversaturation. Um, Because if you just keep playing and you're not having a good time, you're going to stop. So we want to give you just enough. We're like a a crack. We're like a crack dealer. Um, We're going to give you a taste and we want you to keep coming back. So um, yes, we're feeding you drugs. Uh, That's exactly what we're like. Yes, yes. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, it, it is what it is, man. So, um, Herfie, I'm going to take a drink. Got anything to say? Uh, no, I mean, you know, the slides cover it pretty well. Yeah. Everything that I could possibly add is probably on there. Uh, I think it's going to be an exciting time. Uh, I think people are going to be interested to see how it all works out. As you said, we're going to start out a little slower and a little more careful with what we can put in there and what we want to put in there, just because we have to see how well the system works first and everything like that. But uh, once we got it all set up and we know that it runs the way it's supposed to run and everyone's happy with it, we can branch out a little more and make things a little weirder. Cool. And if you hear me opening, I'm making a new drink. My drink's gone, so... <laughs> Um, that's why I'm pausing because I need to drink. Um, mm -hmm. I got vodka and soda next to me, so just having fun. Okay, so that's the schedule. Um, the next one is going to be the race procedure. This is going to be really, really fast. The Basically, the race procedure is going to be very similar to the way we have it right now. We one thing, and you guys are going to love this. So we kind of already talked about this. Uh, open signups at 30 minutes. Uh almost the same system as we have right now. You're going to have a button to sign up, uh, a button to leave. We are going to eliminate the exclamation point join and exclamation point leaves. And we're doing that for simplicity reasons because we're trying to streamline some of this stuff. Um, but yeah, little minor things like that. When this opens, every race is going to have three channels. You're going to have a race channel, which is equivalent to the current active race channel, which is going to have the, the we'll have the race seed posted in there. The countdown will be in there, and then the buttons for you to finish and forfeit. Um, one thing we could do we get to add, which is thankful that we could do this now, is we will give you the option to unforfeit. Um, or I'm sorry, unfinish. We will not have an unforfeit option, but we will have an option to unfinish. Um, 
because if you ax right now, we just made this change this last season. If you hit forfeit now, you get an you get a confirmation box that comes up and says, Are you sure you want to forfeit? So if you meant to hit finish and you accidentally hit forfeit, you can undo it. Not that I've ever done that. I've totally done that once. Um so that's in there as it is right now. So we're gonna give you the other side of it so that if you meant to forfeit and you actually hit finish, we're gonna give you the ability to undo it. Um, there is a limited time period. It's not in this slide, but I have it in the, um, the document. If you hit finish on accident, you have 30 seconds to un to unfinish. Because when you finish, you can see the post race and we don't want people in there maybe seeing things they shouldn't see. And then it's like, oh God, there it is. And I hit unfinish. And if we see people doing that a lot, we're going to investigate that and see if people are trying to game the system. Um, um, I also just want to throw in there, it kind of goes without saying, but please don't abuse this for your mm -hmm. means, where you're like, oh, I'm just going to finish when I'm done with escape and then unfinish. Ha ha, look at my time. And yes. Like oh, we will if ban you. See you. That, you're out. We will ban you. Yeah, don't, 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 oh, dot time or whatever. What was it? It was dot time, right? The old, the I old SRL so, yeah. system. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it. Please don't do it. We will, we will come down hard on you. Um, so yeah, uh, everything else is more or less the same. We're going to have a pre-race channel the way we do right now. You'll get a nice little gift. By the way, if you guys haven't noticed, I've been adding gifts like every week. So I'm trying to make more and more and more. Um, if you're a patron and you don't have a gift in there yet that you want to add, send it to me. I'll add it. Um, and then there'll be a lounge afterward. Same as it is right now. You could chat to your heart's content. There'll be no more threads or anything like that. You guys can just talk. Um, the one thing that people are going to like after 20 minutes, you get removed from that channel, but then we archive and remove the channel, which means everybody bitching about, well, I got into the race lounge or whatever. And I still see the last races thing. Cause discord caches things. If you don't click off of the lounge or whatever, you'll never have caching issues again. So that's going to go away. Cause everything's a brand new channel. We're just going to create them on the fly. So, um, yes. So no more caching issues or anything like that. This is, this is no, this is nothing new. This is kind of the way that it is. So um, let's go to the rankings. So brief overview on this. And this is what I've been busy with for the last couple of months. I, I started this in January and I think the last change I made to it was last week. I've been refining it a lot. Um, obviously our current system works great for 1v1s, but it doesn't really work great expanding. So. What I ended up doing was I took all of the data. Originally, it was season through season 21, and I was I recently merged season 22 data with it. So what I ended up doing was there's just over 7,000 races that we ran on ladder. And I took the pairings and I flattened them out so that if it was a 10-person race, instead of having five pairings, I took all the finish times and made it into one entry. So, or I'm not one entry, but 10 entries for one field and even though they're different seeds, thankfully, the I, I'm just going to say it. The more skilled racers usually still finish before the less skilled racers, even though they're different seeds. So it actually worked really, really well. But I was able to make a, a wonderful data model out of this. It was just over 116,000 data points. That's how many entries we've had since we started Ladder. And I was able to run it through different different types of systems to try to come up with a system that worked for what I, what we wanted to see. So we have the one V one systems. They technically work where you pair up the first place versus second place and the first place versus third place, first versus fourth, and then second versus third, second versus fourth. It we'll get to this. We tried it. Yes. Race time did that originally. And I think SRL did a something like this originally too. Um, we tried some of the other systems, the Glico system. We tried that. We also tried some more of the multiplayer systems. So I was able to implement true skill and open skill. Um, true skill two is a thing. True skill two is difficult. So if you, so you guys know, true skill is licensed. Um, this is a Microsoft product and it's a little bit, it's not like you can just plug and play it very easily. It's not, it's not super easy to implement and test with. Um, but yeah, it is licensed. Open skill is true skill open source. Um, and that's the one I focused on when I did my tests. So with the 1v1s, 
it was just way out there. Little races were giving too few points. Big races were giving too many points. If you guys remember how the old SRL system worked, where first somebody raced for the very first time and they got 400 points, and then sometimes the first person raced and they got no points. Yeah, it was doing similar things. It just didn't work. It was it was garbage. It doesn't work well with big racers. Like it can work, but the gains are too high. The lows are too low. So just it just is what it is. So the open skill, I, I'm gonna say I'm gonna focus on open skill. I did use true skill. It just didn't work great. Um, open skill did work, but open skill has a big flaw in it when you're comparing a three or four person race versus a fifty or sixty person race. And the skill portion of it does not calculate well. It doesn't balance well at all. Um, these systems are more meant for teams. Yes, there are single player aspects, but they're actually meant for like 4v4, 6v6 races. Because um, they were really designed for competitive shooters. Um, and they just, they weren't, it's, we weren't getting the skill rating aspect of it. So... Yes, so we ended up not doing that, which means we went with our third option, which was we made our own. This is a system that I've had in my brain for well over a year. So thankfully we had a head start on it and it didn't really take that long to put to paper and then actually code. Like it's done. Like I could, we went live with this tomorrow, the ranking system works. Like it's done. It's already finished. Um, so here's what it is. I'm gonna give you a short version and then for those that want to step away, when I go through the deep the deep dive, um, it's going to take about 15 minutes to go through the deep dive. Feel free and then come back later if you want to see the end of this. But here's the very high level view. You're going to start with a thousand rating points for every mode. There are no global rankings anymore. There are no seasonal rankings anymore. So if there's open mode, there's open ladder. And you have a ranking on open ladder. There is no global lifetime. There's no, it's everything is lifetime effective mode. And that's it. Because there's no seasons, there's no globals anymore. That's it. So every time you join a new mode for the first time, you're given 1,000 rating points. That's your starting point. Every race, you contribute X amount of points into the pool where X is a static percentage. We'll go over that in the deep dive. That makes our pool of, 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 uh, our pool of points. When the race is completed, we rank everybody first through last. Forfeits are always last. Remember I said forfeits are bad. If there's a 10-person race and eight people finish and two people forfeit, one through eight are the people that finish. Ninth and tenth, or effectively tenth and tenth, are the forfeits. Forfeits are always ranked behind. And, and we'll get over why forfeits are super bad. Um... You don't want to forfeit that much. You still can, but you got to understand what it means. Then we take a Y percentage, which is a variable percentage, and we give the first place finisher Y percent of all the pool. And then what's left, we give the same Y percentage to second place, third place, fourth place, fifth place. And we just go down. So first place gets the most, second gets a little bit less, third place gets a little bit less, fourth, fifth, all the way down to the bottom. Um... Once everything is calculated and we give out points, we also then give out the remainder points, which are, if there's 20 points left in the pool after we've calculated it, we start giving them out one at a time, starting at first place. And then we do a looping structure where then we give out one to first and second, first, second, third, first, second, third, fourth, all the way down until we give out all the remainder points. You have a little bit more incentive for first, higher rankings finish a little bit higher. We also do have a protected zone which is if you finish with the top 19% of the racers, 19% is important. You cannot lose ranking points. There is a scenario where if you are super high ranked against people that are super low ranked, even if you win, you could still technically lose points unless we have a protected zone. So if you win a race or in that top 19%, you can never lose points. SRL, and I think even race time does this, don't they? Am I? I think so. I know yeah. that SRL definitely does. I'm not sure about race time. I, I think they do too. I think I saw it on race time too. I'm not 100% sure about that. Where you could win a race and lose points. I know SRL was notorious for this. Where it was a two-person race and the first person, uh, the first place lost points and the second place won points. Um, we definitely do not want that to happen. So there is a protected buffer. 
you're not going to gain a lot, um, but you're not going to lose. So, um, yes. So that is, that's our system, a very high level view. So here's the deep dive. Um, again, if you don't like this or you want to step away, you got other shit to do, go ahead. It's going to take about 15 minutes to go through all this. And this will be available in the document. I understand if you don't like the number shit. So here's how this works. Here's the deep dive. There's three terms you need to know. There's wager. I'm sorry, four points. Wager, pool, percentage gain, and gain. Those are the four variables we use when we process rankings. The wager is a static percentage of your current ranking times 2.5% or 0.025. So if you have a thousand uh, rating points, you're going to, you are going to contribute 25 points to the pool. If you were ranking of 2000, you're going to put in 50 points. The higher ranking you are, the more you put in because you're expected to do better. This is how we're simulating skill. This is the lower ranking people are putting less in, but they're also not expected to win. So they're, it's just, that's how we're going to calculate skill. So everybody puts in a set amount um, based off of your ranking of that mode times 2.5%. Um, here's a scenario. We're going to use this five person race as an example as we go through this. So in this scenario, you'll see the 1200 ranked persons putting in 30, 1100 is 28. We round everything by the way. Uh, 950 is 24, so on and so forth. This is your wager. Um, and then we take all of the wagers and we put them into the pool. So in this case, the pool is 123. That is the pool. Now we calculate the rankings at the end of every race. We don't even calculate the wagers till the end of the race. Like we know what it's going to be because it's a static percentage, but we don't actually do this until the race is over. Um, so that's our pool. We have our wager, we have our pool. The third thing we have to do is the gain percentage. This is variable because we want the modes to be variable versus small races versus big races. So what we do is we calculate 0.41 minus the total number of racers times 0.005. And what that means is that every race, the gain percentage is either going to be between 0.4 and 0.1. If the percentage comes out to be less than 0.1, we set it to 0.1. Um, we do that so that every, if you think, think this in your head, if it's a two person race, gain percentage is 40%. If it's a three person race, it's 39.5%. Four person race, 39%. More racers, you get less back, but the pool is bigger. And this is how we're doing balance. Still favors bigger races. Bigger races, you're still going to get more because the pool grows exponentially. Well, that's not exponentially, but it grows much, much larger based off the number of people in there. You're just going to get less of it, but you still get more points for the bigger races. This is how we calculate the gain percentage. It's static for every user or for every racer, but we just calculate it based off of the number of racers in the race. So for this example, five racers, the gain percentage is 38.5%. That is the amount of the pool that every racer gets when we go first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, so on and so forth. Then we rank everything out and we calculate the gain. This is how many points you're actually getting. <clears throat> so in this case, uh, and I know it's confusing, racer B ends up getting first. I originally had this racer one, two, three, four, five, and it's super confusing. Made it a little bit easier. Um, Racer B won the race. Now they were ranked second, but we give them, they end up getting first. So we take the pool, which is 123. We multiply that by 0.385. They get 47 points for winning that race. We take that out of the pool, 76 points remaining. Then the second place uh, finisher gets the same 0.385% of 76 now, which is 29. We take that out of the pool, we're left with 47. 47 nets 18. 29 nets 11, 18 nets 7, with 11 points remaining after we've calculated everything. Forfeits, if you see race or C forfeited, we still assign them points so that the pool doesn't get unevenly matched if like a bunch of people forfeit. We still have to take points out. But, spoiler, forfeits do not gain points. This is why forfeits are bad. 
Last point of this is we determine the remainders. The remainder is really simple. So in this scenario, we have 11 points remaining. So what we do is we do an incrementing loop. So there's 11 points remaining. We give a point to first. And if there's still points remaining, then we expand that by one. Now we give a point to first and second. So in this scenario, first place has two points. Second place has one point. We still have points. We expand it down to three. So now racer, the third, first place gets three points, two points, one points. We continue this until either we run out of points or we run out of racers. Now in this scenario, we ran out of points. So in this scenario, racer, uh, the first place gets five extra points. Second place gets three, two, one. If we run out of racers, we just reset the we reset it and do it again. Um, and then we would just give another point to first place, second, first. We just keep repeating it until we run out of points. Those are the remainder points. Then we just add them together. So in this case, racer, uh, racer B, who got first place, had 1,100 to start. We take away 28. We gain 47 plus 5 which means their 1,100 went to 1,124. They gained 24 points. Second place, wagered 30, got back 29 with three remainder points. They only gained two. Remember, if this was reversed and racer A got first, they probably would have gotten a lot more than that, but they were ranked a little bit higher at the start. They gained a little bit back because they wagered more. Um, and yet, yeah, you go down the list. The important one here is the last place forfeit. Their wager still gets taken into account. We take away 24. They had points assigned to them, but we do not award them with points. If you forfeit, you gain no points. You, you, you forfeit your wager, you're done. Finish your aces. If, you, if you're serious about the last place finisher, will always get points back. Well, okay, shouldn't say always. Big, big, big races, we do eventually run out of points. But the last place finisher is always going to do better than a person that forfeited. So finish your races. The This is set up to balance out small races versus big races. Now, as you can see here, a five-person race, first place only netted 24 points. That doesn't seem like a lot. But it's a slow incremental gain. Uh, bigger races when we did the simulations, like the very, very, very first ladder race that we did on day one was a hundred person race. We capped. And when we ran that simulation, that person gained 224 points, I think is what the number came out to be. I don't remember exactly, but it was like 224 is in that range. Um, that's a lot of points, which is a big race. You deserve that. You want a huge hundred person race. You deserve a lot of points. So winning big races is still awarding you with more. Winning big races still rewards you, but just not as much. Um, same with losing. Like you're still going to lose points if you finish lower. You're just not going to lose quite as much. Um, so yes, this is how we figure this stuff out. Now, again, two caveats here. Top 19% is a protected field. If you finish at that, you will never, ever, ever lose points. If you were to lose points, we instead net gain you 5% of your wager, which means the minimum, if you win a race, the minimum you will ever gain is 5%. I, and I even say that if you gain less than 5% of your wager, let's say you were only to gain 2%, you still gain 5%. That is the hard minimum you will ever gain by winning a race. It's 5% of your wager. Um, so if you were to wager 50 points and you won, but it was, you know, a, it was the one of those weird situations where you were really high ranked and they were really low ranked, you would gain three points because it's 5% rounded up, which is 2.5 rounded up to three. Um, ties are handled. We have to handle ties a little bit differently than we would normally do. What we end up doing with ties, let's say first and second tied, like to the second. We, we rank them one and two instead of one and one. But what we do when we calculate is that we determine that one and two are actually tied so if first place were to get 100 points, second place were to get 60 points, at the end of it, we actually split the difference. So instead of getting 160, they both get 80. Um, that, that's the way we handle ties. So yeah, that's how we, we, just have, to, we have to handle that in post because we don't want like a higher ranked person tied with a lower ranked person is still going to lose more points because they wagered more, but the gain they get back is the same. So... 
that's how we handle ties. Um, quick overview. So yes, I already mentioned this. Uh, we handled all of the data from season one all the way through season 22. At the end of this, there were five racers with a rating over 3,000. Five. And it took four years to get there. And that I love. Because it's an incremental game over time. You're, you're, you're rewarded for winning big races. You're still rewarded for winning small races. You're just not rewarded as much. That's, that, I mean, that's expected. I can imagine everybody understands that. Um, the lowest rating was, was just over 100, like 112 or something like that. But they for, it's one of those races that forfeits like every other race. And yeah, if you forfeit a lot, you're going to lose points. Because you're, not gonna, you're never going to gain back. You're always losing. Um, I've spent a lot of time on this. That being said, this is going to be public. Um, there's a channel that's going to be available in the discord. As soon as we're done with this, that is going to have the overview of everything that we have in there so far. It'll be continuously updated as we approach release. If you're a math guy, read through this. If you see a flaw, please tell us because we've only had up until now, three people look at this. It's the two of us. And our latter president, Dante. <laughs> <laughs> we decided to give him a, a, a role. We decided to give him something to do. So we actually ran this past him, what, about a month ago, I'm going to say. Um, this has been done for a while. Uh, so, yeah, if you see something that seems flawed, please reach out. I might have missed something, but I have been over this. A hundred times, maybe. I'm going to say about a hundred times. I've probably been through this start and finish. It's been tweaked many times, um, but yeah. If you see something that I missed, please reach out. Um, what else? Oh. Sorry, need a drink. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, yeah, so incentivizes top finishes, highly punishes forfeits. I cannot stress that. Data plot, if you're out there, I'm sorry. Um, oh. Yeah, well, it is what it is. Don't forfeit. Um, as I mentioned before, there is no lifetime. There's no global. Um, every mode gets one ladder, one ladder only. That's it. Now, we're never going to have champions um, because we're not going to have seasons anymore, which means at the end of the season, when we award champions, that kind of goes away. It kind of sucks. But I think what we're going to end up doing is we're going to have a dynamic leaderboard and every race where the leaderboard changes after like once 10 races are in our ladder, we're going to have a number one. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to incorporate that with a bot and we will give people flair whenever they become the leader of a, of a ladder. And we'll have a channel that is strictly for leaderboards. And when there's a leaderboard change, we'll announce it. And there'll just be a post in there saying, Hey, so-and-so is top leader. Yay! Um, you know, stuff like that. Uh, so yes, um, yeah. So that is how our ranking system works. Um, I ooh, I don't think I have that in here. Invitations are staying, by the way. I know just it got just asked in chat. Invitations are still going to be in there. We're probably going to do something like if we do a cut to sixteen, we're just going to take the top sixteen ranked, um, similar to the way we do right now. Um, we're still going to do invitations every year. We're still going to do it. So. Um, Yes. Yes, it is, Solsky. Shut your face. <sighs> anyway. Um, we do have a decay system in place. So with a system like this, we had to make sure decay happens because we can't have people sit on it. So we have a decay system in place. It's a slow decay, but it does happen. And D will, if you're out there, we salute you and your 520 global lifetime ALTTPR ranking that is still there today um so here's how we're going to handle decay it's it's complex but it's not really uh, more or less what it means is first thing we do is we pull at the conclusion of every race once we've done rankings we take a look and see if there are is any race mode that has been raced in the last 30 days so like evergreen modes like open and casual boots those are always going to apply for decay because they're always going to be ran. We're never getting rid of those. Um, if it has not ran in 30 days, let's say that it's a mode that we just stop racing and we're going to rotate it out for six months. We're not going to count that because you should not be 
you should not be decayed for something that isn't valid. We're just not racing it. So those are considered stale modes and we just ignore them. Um, once we know which modes are applicable for decay, we take a look at all racers that have raced it at least once, but have not raced it within 90 days. So if you have, if your last race of an open mode was, you know, three months ago, you are, it's possible that you will get, get decayed. Um, we also then look to see how many total times that racer has raced it in the calendar year, 365 days. Um, that is important because we also limit how much a decay can happen for every individual mode. So let's say you've only raced it one time. We take that and we multiply that by five, which means the maximum amount of decay you could ever get is 5%. If you've raced it a hundred times and you just stop racing it for three months, it means the maximum number that you can get is 30%. We cap it at 30. So one is five, two is 10, 15 is you know, three is 15, six is 30, seven is also 30, 100 is 30. We're capping at 30% of decay. And then we just check and see how much of accrued decay has occurred for that racer for that mode. So if you've already been decayed 30%, you don't get decayed. Your, your decay is gone. But if you have 0% decay and you have a cap of 10%, then we apply 5% of your last race ranking we take 5% away. So if you were at 1,000 and you're, if you're applicable for decay, we take away 50 points. So now your ranking is 950. And seven days later, it happens again. We have a seven-day cooldown for every racer, for every mode. Modes are handled individually because, again, some can be stale. Maybe you only run one mode and you, you, know, you only race one mode now. So any old mode gets decayed, but the new modes do not. Um, and that racer that had a 5% decay, if it's decayed again, then they get another 5%, which means now their 950 is 900. We don't take 5% of 950, we take it of 1,000, because that's what you raced last. Um, and now your ranking is 900. Now the seven days comes up, and that 10 the person that's raced it twice, well, we've already had 10% taken away. That's their cap. We don't touch you. You're done. You will never get decayed beyond that. And this is for people that raced a mode once or maybe twice, and then they decided they don't like the mode. We're going to decay you a little, but not a lot. And then you're just done because if you come back later, we don't want your ranking to plummet. So when you come back, it'll be waiting for you slightly decayed, but yeah. Um, when you come back to race it, we take 5% of the accrued decay away. So if you have 30% decay and you start racing it again, well, now your decay accrued drops to 25%, which means if you stop again, you only race once, your cap is still 30, your accrued is 25. We're only going to decay you once. If you race six times, your accrued is gone. We will decay you up to six times. So it balances out so that you're not taking away all your rating, um, but we have to have a decay system. Otherwise, what will happen is that somebody that's got like a 2,500 rating that's 300 points higher than the next person can just, you know, not do anything for a bit and that ranking will never go away. So we have to have something in place. Um, yeah, and that'll just go against your ranking. You'll be able to see it on the website. We might have changes in the leaderboard based off of that. But yes, it's going to happen at the end of every race. So like five or six times a day, well, not more than that, sorry, like eight to 10 times a day, we will check for decay. Um, but you're on a seven-day cooldown. You can only decayed once every seven days per mode. So that's a mouthful. It's a lot to take in at once. But I think you know, once you sit down and read through it a little bit and think about it, it, it all makes sense. And it's not that as complicated as it may seem in a huge slide right now. Yeah, yeah. This is the when we went over it. Both you and Dante said the same thing. It's a lot of information. Again, the document will be available at the conclusion is, which we're almost done. There's only a couple slides left. Um, and please, if you like looking at this shit, I know there's a lot of you out there that do, read through it. I made a, a, a statistical mistake, a math mistake. I'm not infallible. Please bring it up and tell me and we'll look into it. And if it's something that is deemed needs to be done, uh, we'll do it. So yeah. Um couple little miscellaneous things and then we're done. We'll open up to Q&A if people have questions. 
Um, website integrations is something I've been wanting to do. The website's informational only. Now we are going to add things to the website because we don't have to hide ranking or pairings anymore. We can display people's racing streams and stuff like that. Yes, we understand what that means. I'm not going to say it out loud. I think everybody understands. Um, I don't know how much effort we're going to put into this because again, it's discord handles the majority of this, but yeah, uh, but we are going to make some improvements to the website. I have some of it done already. Uh, I have six months to finish it. I'm not rushed. I've got other things to work on too. Um, we will be adding more integrations though, with like polls and voting polls and voting is stuff that's going to happen more often now than it did before. Cause we are going to open things up to people voting on modes and stuff. We have, I mean, we could potentially put up to, I don't know, 15 to 20 modes per rotation. Like we could, oh, really open this thing up, which means gives you guys the ability to give us options about what you want to see. Um, those are going to go through the website. We actually have something coming next season in season 24 where we're going to ask you guys to vote on something and it will go through the website. Um, before we would do like Google Sheets and stuff like that, that's going to go away. It's all going to go through the website. Um, that also prevents people from stuffing the ballot box. But um, yeah, so we're going to do that. Uh, that will become a, a real time thing. It'll just happen. Uh, website's going to have more racer stats. Um, so I set up the new database structure in a way that is really easy to calculate stats. Excuse me. So like your incremental rankings, uh, I've already kind of got this in there. It's just not finished where it'll show your graph. So you could see in a graph format, this is how much, you know, this is your trend. You had a really good month. Oh, you shot at the rankings and you, your rating goes up and then you had a really bad month and it plummets. We'll have visualizations for graphs. One of the big things people wanted, and it's less important with this structure than it would be for 1v1, but we can still do it, is versus rankings. Like if somebody wants to know X versus Y, how I did against this particular racer, I've set it up so that it'd be really easy to query that data and display it for you to say, oh, well, when I race this person, I finish higher than them 80% of the time. Stuff like that. So it's, it's structured in a way that a lot of stuff will be available in a rankings page. I'm sorry, a racer page, right? Like the individual racers. Um, and again, I mentioned this last thing earlier, but we, we have the ability to do restreams and stuff. I don't really care. Like it's something we may do down the road, but it is definitely not important. And it won't happen this year. It'll be maybe next year. Maybe not. I don't care. Like if we could open things up and maybe even make it automated... Like, wow, if it'd be cool, it'd be cool as hell to open this up so that whenever a race is going, I have a server here that I could I use for restreams for the invitationals. We just pick a couple racers at random and throw them up there. Uh, we don't need comms for that. We just throw them up there, put an interface on there. We just turn on the we just turn on the audio and we have some fun with it. Let's see if they bitch and moan about, you know, what's going on. We can do things like that. It gives us so much more flexibility. So um so yes, those are some of the miscellaneous things that we're looking at. Um, the last thing we got to go over, and we already touched on this, we need to be more vigilant on cheating. We understand this is going to open up doors for cheating. We get it. Um, it's just going to make it easier. Now, I, I trust 95% of you guys. But boy, there's about 5% of you that I don't know who you are. And sometimes I see shit that looks a little weird and we watch it. So we will continue to watch that. We've got watch lists, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, if you see something, then tell us, um, you know, it's one of those things that we just, we need more policing and we need people to, to report it. Just again, don't witch hunt, please don't witch hunt. If we catch you witch hunting, we're going to call you on it. Um, so yeah, again, we do track things. We have a lot of tracking in the background, um, but it's helped a bunch. We have caught, how many cheaters have we caught, Herfie? Maybe 20? Yeah, something like that. Maybe well, a little less, maybe a little more. Well, maybe the same one counts multiple times. Yeah, um, okay, that's fair. Yeah, and sometimes it's easy. Sometimes people, you know, blind go to the library to get the fire rod except they forgot they didn't go to the library at the beginning of the game and they have no idea what could be there um 
you know, stuff like that. Or they accidentally take clips while they're watching other people's streams. Oh, there's that example again. Yeah. Wow. Did that actually happen? No, I can't believe. Can't, I can't believe somebody would be that fucking stupid. Nah. Um, but yes, we're going to watch and we're going to enhance what we can. And we just need your help. That's all. We just need your help. So, um, yes, I get it. This is a lot. There's a lot here. <laughs> so, I just opened up the channel in Discord. Um, this is the uh, the feedback channel. You guys will see it now. Um, that has a copy of the main document as well as this presentation is on there as well. It's all public. Feel free to read it. We will be updating that document now between now and in October. Um, we feel it's good. We feel this is a positive change. So far, the feedback in chat has been really positive, and I'm thrilled about that. Um, that was our biggest fear. Like that's why I have a drink in front of me, is because I was worried that you guys are gonna be like. Fuck you, this is shit. Um, but yeah, I think overwhelmingly it's positive. And honestly, if you hate it and you didn't put in your feedback, it's your fault. Like we looked at every word that came in on feedback. Keep that in mind the next time we do feedback. Um, and yeah, please scrutinize the ranking system. The ranking system is the most important part of this. Uh, the schedule and the way we're doing things is trivial to be honest with you it's really not difficult it's not complex and yeah it's just not much to it it's 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 just we're just got to implement it but the ranking system if there's a flaw it'll be very noticeable and we need to make sure that gets snuffed out bet between now and october so <sighs> questions anybody i'm yeah <laughs> I'm exhausted, Question, man. Anybody? Yeah, yeah that's. Uh, I mean, it was a lot to get through, and uh, it's a lot to take in for sure. But um, I mean, really, to to sum it all up, uh, it's not happening next week. So right. you have plenty of time to read through everything yes. to familiarize yourself oh. with all the changes and stuff like that. Yes, and thank you for bringing that up. This is subject to change. <laughs> <laughs> everything is suspect is subject to change. We have six months before we even go into beta. Uh, the way it's set up right now, if I calculated it correctly, season 25 is scheduled to end on October 7th. Isn't that SGL weekend? Uh, it is. I thought it was. Yeah, we're, we're our last race with this mode is SGL weekend, I believe. It might be the Monday after. Um, but yeah, so we have a lot of time. If you guys have feedback, please give it. As long as it's constructive. Um, but yeah. It's all there. Every piece of information that we went over today is in the document. Um, that document is out there right now. It is available. Um, read it. It's in the title of the, if you go to ladder feedback, uh, ladder part du feedback, it is posted there and available. Please pull it up, read it as much as you want. If you have questions, send them over. If you have concerns, send them over. Public channels available to us. Uh, there was one question in the chat I did see. Uh, an example of decay. Um, I'll, I'll go over it again really quick. Uh, very broad, simple example. If you have a ranking in open of 2,000 and you race it, you know, you raced it 80 times in this last year <clears throat> and then you stopped racing open. Now you could still be racing other modes. Let's say you just stop racing open and casual boots is now your thing and you stopped racing open altogether. After 90 days, after your last open race, when an open race finishes, actually, I won't even say that, when any race finishes, we, we don't, we're not subject to the race that finished, and open is still racing, we take your ranking that you left with, which is 2,000, and we take away 5% of it, which in this case would be 100. So now your new ranking is 1,900. That can repeat up to six times. Up to the cap, which in your case, as you've raced a lot, is 30%. If you've only raced it once, your cap is 5%. Um, and then we only take away up to 5%. So yeah, it, it, it's, it's, we, we have, you can lose up to 30%. So if you lost 30% of your 2000 ranking, full decay is 1400 and then we stop. And then if you come back and race again, the decay goes away. And then if you stop again, we can start doing it again. 
It'll never go above 30%, and it's based off of how often you raise that. Decay can absolutely take you below 1,000. Again, oh, I think I, I think it was in here, but I think I skipped over it. I glazed over it. The average ranking, when this is all done, the average ranking was around 900. The median was like 940, something like that. It was just under 1,000 because forfeits don't give points. So you're always going to lose a few, the, like the overall average and the median is always going to drop a little bit because forfeits lose points. So it's not, a, it's not, the original system, we had forfeits not take any points at all and it was always zero. So if 50 points were won, 50 points were lost. So the end ranking when everything was done minus the decay was always zero. It was cool, but then we had imbalances between races, big races that had no forfeits versus big races that had 10 forfeits because then there were more points in the pool. So we had to remove that. So now if it's a 10 person race with exactly the same rankings as another 10 person ranks, but two forfeit in one and none forfeit in the other, the results are identical. It's just the forfeits don't get points. We just throw them out the window. So yeah. Whew. Uh, so the K is multiplier that changes. Uh, it, it, it is subtraction, but it's, it's a multiple. It's a five. It's always 5%. It's always 5%, but we cap it based off of how many races you have raced. So if you figure, again, if you've raced it three times in a calendar year, the most we will ever remove is 15%. So three instances of 5% each. So when it hits, you'll get 5%. A week later, 5 more percent. A week later, 5 more percent. Then we stop. Because um, again, if you only race it a few times and then you decide you don't like it, well, that's fine. I'm not going to take 30% of your ranking away because you decided you didn't like a mode. We're going to take a little bit away, but we're not going to take away the whole thing. So, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of that stuff is going away. Like, the pings are going away. Um, the, there's no race savior pings. A lot of the stuff gets simplified. Um, like, opponent finishes is going away. Like, all that's gone. You'll be able to visual... You'll be able to see... This is one of those things I still need to work out. I think what's going to happen is that in the active race channel, we're going to have, as soon as the race begins, we're going to have a, a post that goes up to show everybody. Um, like if there's 30 people in a race, we're going to have one message coming up. that's going to have 30 lines on it. Or maybe it's got to be split between two lines. I got to find out Discord's limitations on number of messages and how much data we can put into there. But you'll be able to see when people finish because we'll just update those messages with where they finished. So you can keep an eye on that. It's the same channel that's got the buttons when you finish and when you end. So it's right there. So you'll be able to see when people finish. It's public knowledge. The website will also reflect this at the same time. But just don't be on the website on that page when you're racing because I'm pretty sure I'm going to have links on there to show people's streams if they want to view it. Um, so yeah, you're not where you want to be. You want to be focusing on Discord. Um but yeah, so that's going to be there. Uh, uh, but yeah, like the, the ping system goes away completely. The only pings that are going to be available is that if you want to get a ping when an open race starts, you'll get a ping when an open race starts. Like that's it. That's the only pings you'll get now. Um, yeah, there's just no point anymore. So anybody else? Any other questions? Anybody can watch WrestleMania tonight? It's WrestleMania weekend. I'll be watching. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, motherfucker. It starts tonight. <laughs> I think it's 7 o'clock uh, Central time, I believe. 8 o'clock Eastern. Maybe it's 7, uh, 6 o'clock. I don't remember. It's either 6 or 7. Um, oh, yeah, I'll be watching. This is going to be a great WrestleMania. Oh, I hope they don't fuck it up. <clears throat> so. But once again, it's all available to you. Um, we've been on for about an hour and a half. So... If everybody, if there's no other questions, I think we'll tie it off so that I can go get some food and soak up some of this booze. Um, mm -hmm. Again, thank you, everybody. I know it's a huge amount of information. We'll have more about this later. Um, and again, the channel is available for you guys to use. I hope everybody enjoys it. I hope it's good. I think it's, I think it's got potential to be great. Um, yeah. So I think it sounds really cool. I'm excited. And uh, as Duncan said, the channel is open. We're there. We'll we'll answer questions if you think of anything else that you need answered. 
And uh, we're, we're open to <clears throat> suggestions and criticism if it is constructive. Yes, please be constructive. That's all we say. So, wonderful. Um, I think with that, I think we're out of here. Um, thank you again, as always. This has been a lot of work. We've been working on this, again, before January, but really since January. So this is about three months of work. Um, kind of culminated all up to this. I've been working my ass off in my free time going over numbers. I think I've mentioned it publicly, like our last announcement that we had for the last season. I mentioned that it's been, it's taken a lot of my free time. If people are asking why I don't do updates to the tracker anymore, here's why. I've been working on this a lot, a lot of numbers. Like, I probably put in at least 50, 60 hours into just the calculations for the rankings alone to tweak them to make sure they work because I have to rerun them every time I make a change and then compare them to see did it go too high, too low, and all that. It's been a lot of work. So, um, Again, thank you, everybody. Appreciate all the support you guys give us. And uh, with that, I'm going to salute to you. And Herfie, please take us out of here. All right, guys. Well, just before we leave, I want to give a, a big personal thanks to Dunka. He has been the mastermind behind all this, and not only the mastermind, but also the, the master builder. Uh, he's done all the coding. He's done all the legwork. He's run the numbers and compared them, as he just said. I, I'm just here to look at and say yes or no every now and again. So <laughs> a big thanks to Dunka for, for doing all this, putting all his free time into this, really. And uh, I think it's going to be super exciting and super awesome. Uh, as we said, if you need anything answered or if you have any feedback, feel free to use the channel on the Discord. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend.